Sports Mag, my friends, is like this fire extinguisher. On the surface, it's just a big red thing with a lot of hot air and steam inside, but once you press that pump, once you get that show going, the fun really begins. And we put out some fires too sometimes. Welcome to CU Sports Magazine. That's Kimberly Godin. I'm Marshall Zellinger. You're you. We're us. We have to start today with some serious news that relates mm -hmm. to CU Athletics with the football program and the recruits. An ongoing rape investigation for the past five months sort of takes a turn to a close today. Yes, it does. No charges were filed. Uh, they didn't think that there was enough sufficient evidence in rape cases such as this where it's an acquaintance rape. Sometimes there's not enough evidence. And so we've come to a close after five months saying that charges won't be filed. 28 exactly. DNA samples were taken, but again, as of now, no charges will be filed. Five months comes mm -hmm. to a close. But to now to more lighter news for CU Athletics. So who is CU's newest basketball coach? It's Jim Jabir. C Seal Berry announced Tuesday that Jabir would be coming to Colorado to fill CU's empty assistant coaching position. The position became available when Jen, Jen Warden left for Boise State to take over their program. It's a coincidence because she was coaching for CU when the Buffs were in Boise State for the women's basketball tournament. So what a convenient way to interview for the job. In addition to coaching, Jabir will also help recruit and scout for new players. Jabir has been a head coach for 16 years. Six of them, the last six, were at Providence. Before that, six years at Marquette. So we can only assume that he'll be at Colorado for six years. Although he is a native Brooklyn, New Yorker, he says he looks forward to moving to Colorado, and Jabir is bringing his wife and three kids with him. It's a lot of hard-hitting action that may leave you slightly bruised and battered, but according to the Boulder head, the, oh my goodness, excuse me, according to the Boulder rugby team's head coach, he says that it's a lot of necessary roughness that's often misunderstood. The the roughness of the game, as you put it, is really, it's somewhat overblown. I think there's a lot of tough sports out there. I think that uh, rugby has uh, a relatively poor reputation in the United States. I think a lot of people uh, don't acknowledge the amount of on-field skill and so on that's required to play it. And I think to any layman watching the game, it looks like a bunch of guys crashing into each other. But then for a foreigner, so does football. And I think that uh, just understanding the nuances of the game, you really get a lot of respect for the athletes on the field. That might be because he's played rugby competitively for 18 years. With practice twice a week and games on the weekend, the rugby team was, has 150 members and 50 active players who play each week. The team has no affiliation to CU's club team, but obviously they don't need help recruiting members. There are players of all ages on the team from high school to middle-aged men. So if you're into full contact sports that get you great exercise, Boulder Rugby may be the sport for you. The new season for the men starts in June, so if you want more info, you can log on to www.boulderrugby.com. I'm going to go sign up right after the show. Good. While CU's football team wrapped up spring practices just last week, a number of players from last year's squad made a splash in the 2002 NFL Draft also last week. All-American tight end Daniel Graham was the first buff picked at number 21 by the New England Patriots. It was prospected he might go to the Seahawks, but the Patriots traded up and got him. Two more were taken in the second round with O-liner Andre Giroud going 37th to the Cowboys and safety Michael Lewis going 57th to the Eagles, ignoring a possible irregular heartbeat with Lewis. Defensive tackle Justin Bannon went to the Bills in the fifth round, the fourth pick of the fifth round, and finally, almost literally, 259th pick of the draft out of 261 was O-liner Victor Rogers. He was selected by the Lions with the third to last pick in the draft. Other notables, John Minardi, Robbie Robinson, Cedric Cormier, and Jay Sean Sykes all signed as free agents with other NFL teams. Millions of dollars were up for grabs over the weekend as the NFL held their annual draft as Marshall was just talking about. A few CU players were in the running, and including Daniel Graham, as you heard Marshall was talking about, Let's see what he had going for him. 
Jackson's in place at the Graham House in Denver. Graham's father sits to his left, almost as anxious as he is. The phone rings. How you doing, Coach? Okay. His dad crouches behind him, not knowing who's on the other end. Everybody out here is wondering what's going on. It's a funny yeah. thing when an NFL draftee makes his family watch his future on ESPN. The uh, New England Patriots have acquired the 21st pick in this draft from the Washington Redskins, and the Patriots have selected Daniel Graham, tight end from the University of Colorado. Ooh. Graham's still on the phone. It hasn't hit him what just happened. So what does he feel about going to the Patriots? Happy to go to New England. One year late, but you know, I'll be up there. <laughs> so I'll be up there, you know, to you know, help to do what I can do. So why did he keep it a secret? Uh, like I said, you know, everybody was surprised, you know, I didn't want to tell anybody, I just want everybody else to be surprised like I was, you know. CU Sports Magazine would like to thank KCNC TV Channel 4 in Denver and ESPN for that footage. Now on to trivia. For those of you ousted in the early rounds of CU's Trivia Bowl, sort of like Luke Howell, which you'll hear about later, and forced to hide your head in shame, you have a chance to redeem yourself. Yes, it's Sports Mag's trivia question, and yes, it's coming up right now. When was the last time CU had a football player selected in the first round of the NFL Draft, we'll give you about 25, 26, 27 minutes to ponder that. Give us your calls, your emails, whatever. We'll see if you can get it right. So next when we come back, the anchors are going to be different, but the show will still be the same. That's right, Kimmy. We're going to be running off for a little bit. More people coming up here, but as we head to break, we're going to show you about a little guy who has grown through the years. We like to call him our director, Luke Howell. Yes, Luke the Great. Feet one inch tall from Lakewood, Luke Howell. Center, I'm Luke Howell. Joining me tonight is Robert Stride. Now tonight proves to be an interesting matchup as we get set to watch the Colorado Bulls. All the seniors, I wish you guys the best. Hopefully, whenever I am the greatest person in the world, alive, ever, you will be there to be my understudy. you go through in life. Scary. The worst thing about being on welfare was uh, at Christmas time. I couldn't get my kids what they really wanted. I had to get a better life for my girls and myself. I got off welfare. I got a good job. Makes me the happiest mother in the world. I live for my girls. We're not asking you to hire everyone on welfare. Just one. are 100% unadulterated energy. You have no choice but movement. You aren't acted on. You are action. You have the power to make the world a better place. You already know how to do it. Volunteer now for the American Red Cross. Call your local chapter for details. Terrell Bishop is angry and taking to the street again tonight to take it back from pushers and gangs and make it safe for his four-year-old. Whose side are you on? Terrell is a mad dad, family men who work with local authorities to keep their neighborhoods safe. 
Not everyone has to take to the streets, but everyone can take a step to help kids. Call us. We're fighting for the children. Whose side are you on? Hello and welcome back to CU Sports Mag. I am Zach Nelson. Well, the CU women's golf team finished 11th at the Big 12 Championships last weekend in Manhattan, Kansas. For the Buffs, this marks the second consecutive year finishing near the bottom of the league. Oklahoma State, on the other hand, took the Big 12 title for the second straight year. And on Tuesday, the Big 12 named three Buffs to the 2002 Academic All-Big 12 team. Well, it's almost summertime for many students. That means it's time to begin the summer job search. Kimberly Godin shows us an old job that has benefits above par. To keep us out of trouble. Don Larson remembers what it was like when he was a golf caddy. I got started at a very young age. I was only eight. As a matter of fact, uh, they had uh, several nicknames for me because I was so small <laughs> and the bags were bigger than I was. Today, young men and women across the United States get a life lesson while on the golf course. Once a caddy himself, now the caddy master at the exclusive Broadmoor Country Club in Colorado Springs, George Barker couldn't think of a better way for a student to spend their summers. I think it's one of the, definitely one of the best summer jobs that anybody could have. You know, you're outside mm -hmm. all the time, you, uh, you're paid daily, um, and you get to enjoy a game that's just, you see the actual tradition and the rich heritage that it does have. Reading greens to get the green isn't the only benefit to this job. Western Golf Association director Kevin Laura remembers his job as a caddy. The fact that you are exposed to uh, movers and shakers of the country, uh, of any industry, of any walk of life, uh, male or female, and it's, it's just wonderful to be exposed at that age to adults that are at the top of their game. By sticking with a caddy program, you can go from being a high school student to a college graduate. The Western Golf Association awards the Evans Scholarship to deserving young men and women who not only excel on the golf course as caddies, but in the classroom. Created by golfer Chick Evans, this four-year full-ride scholarship can't be beat. Here at the Colorado Chapter of Evans Scholars at the University of Colorado, it's one of 14 scholarship houses for Evans Scholars in the United States. Scholars here say that by being golf caddies, they've been given the opportunity of a lifetime. Susan Rayfield and Doug Lardis, now Colorado Evans Scholars, were both caddies in Illinois. <laughs> it's given me a full ride out of state college tuition, which I otherwise wouldn't be able to afford. Doug? Uh, it's given me, besides the scholarship, just uh, a household of 40 people that are like brothers and sisters to me. Brothers and sisters that Susan and Doug hope to have forever. And forever is something WGA hopes for with Colorado Caddy programs. Here in Colorado, we have very small or very few caddy programs because of the fact that we have very uh, few established clubs that have had caddy programs for decades. Primarily, private country clubs benefit from caddy programs. New golf courses, especially resorts, take up a lot of space and are too long to walk. Public golf courses generate more revenue from golf carts. The golf cart is becoming, it's a mainstay in, in golf. It's clubs like the Broadmoor whose members embrace both caddies and carts to keep the tradition alive. So while you have to look alive early in the mornings to go and caddy, the lifetime of experiences may be worth the long walk. Kimberly Godin, News Team Boulder. Up until last Saturday, the CU women's team, tennis team had not won since March 10th. That's nearly a month and a half without a victory. While well, they may have snapped a six-match losing streak last weekend, but the victory was short-lived. Yesterday afternoon, Texas Tech upset CU 5-0. The loss knocked the Buffs out of the Big 12 tournament in just the first round. The Netters closed the season with a record of 11-12. Now, if you guys remember the beginning of Sports Mag, that guy who had the fire hydrant right in his lap, well, when Mitch Snyder has time to put his little red friend down, he's probably one of the most wittiest kids we here at Sports Mag have ever met. So without further ado, we thank Mitchell Snyder for all of his hard work here. Mitch, how you doing, Zach? I'm doing good. Looking forward to this game, man. I'm pumped. It's going to be a great game, and I really like that trivia question. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. 
But if any of you Buff fans are starting to worry that Colorado may have lost that winning edge, I have two words for you. Oklahoma State. But anyway, like I said, I've had a great time uh, presenting sports to you and uh, I'll miss the cast and crew and everyone and uh, thank you very much. I'm oh, I get it now! Thanks, Professor Jaquette. 5-0, they are ranked. They have played a fairly light schedule. Briefly, what are your thoughts on that? Get stopped the red light, at least when I see Mitch. You know, I roll over and I see this guy, Mitch Schneider, and I honk. He rolls down his window and I'm like, you're the guy from City Sports Bank. And he's like, yeah, you are too. And I'm like, oh my yeah. god. And then we realize we're the only two people that watch it. It will be time to toss that proverbial cow into the ring. Close attention to the CU Express dance team. Well, sports mag Marshall Zellinger sure did. And he brings us up close and personal with someone who grabs your attention in a rather unconventional way. My parents put me in dance when I was four. I was in occupational therapy, and the therapist thought that um, dance would help me learn coordination. I was just supposed to be in it for a little while, and then I ended up loving it. Julie Vogel can dance with the best of them, so it's no surprise that she grabs people's attention when she's on center stage. Unfortunately for Julie, it's not always her precision and timing that people notice first. I've had people say, what happened to your arm? And I'll say, I was born without a hand, and they're like, oh, like they're disappointed, like they wanted some big dramatic story or something, you know. That's right. This senior captain of the CU Express dance team was born without a left hand and forearm. But dancing has never been a challenge for her. I think that a lot of people just assume that I was just a girl with two hands who learned how to dance. Somewhere along the way I got in some traumatic accident and lost my hand and then persevered and kept on dancing, you know? I've dealt with this for 21 years. She's obviously very impressive, um, very stylized. CU Express coach Tamika Queeley has only known Julie a few years, but recognized her talent in little time. She has such incredible technique. One of the most stylized dancers on the team. Uh, technically, she just possesses um, a very natural ability. An ability her teammates recognize, naming her most valuable rookie and a two-time most valuable veteran, all in the past three years. I think her teammates really truly respect her, her talent and her ability and they also uh, respect her as a choreographer. She is very, very talented. I feel like I'm really determined in every aspect of my life because of this. Like I always want to prove myself in every area because of this and I wouldn't be that way, I don't think, if I wasn't born that way. So what does Julie say to people who can't see past her prosthetic arm? You hear people saying, oh, she's trying to overcome adversity. Like. I'm not, because, I mean, I'm not on some big campaign for disabled people. I just like to dance. Marshall Zellinger, CNN Student Bureau, Boulder, Colorado. Well, Zach, looks like you're doing, what's going on? <laughs> well, I'll take over now, Zach. Nice. And it's springtime here in Boulder, and to many of you, especially our director, Luke Howell, that brings to mind one sport, and that's full contact Easter egg hunting season. But to many others, it also means lacrosse season. The CU men's lacrosse team has found success in recent years. However, this year's team has found the road to the tournament to be somewhat rocky. Finishing out the regular season with a 7-8 record, highs and lows include tough losses at CSU and BYU, and big wins against Illinois and the University of California at Davis. This weekend, CU will travel to Provo, Utah for their league tournament. The winner of the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse League will receive an automatic bid to the national tournament in St. Louis. CU faces off against CSU in the first round Friday. So good luck, Buffs. I right, know you see my partner here, Ian, with a little stubble on his chin. A little stubble, yeah. Well, he must be trying to emulate our next enshrined senior, and that's none other than Marshall Zellinger with his ever-changing facial arrangements. At Texas Tech, unless you're there, so. I've never played at Texas Tech. I wouldn't know what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. The past two weeks, the Colorado Buffaloes have gone from underdogs to Big 12 champions. Stay tuned after the break, because afterwards, Kimmy and Ian are going to tell you what to do this weekend. Enough football can't...
Mitch. Oh, Mitch ran out to the practice fields to talk to Gary Barnett, and he's going to bring us this interview. Take it away, Mitch. Thanks a lot, Ian. The Buffs look to make it five in a row as they take on Iowa State tomorrow night, Saturday. Game time's at 7 p.m. at the Coors Event Center, and they will be playing without Sonia Russell for at least two weeks. Easter egg hunts. They're going to be winners, losers, and even casualties of war. Throw it to you in what we call the Big 12 Raft. People are reading into that a little too much and what it really is. He's yeah. gonna squish him like a bug. Like uh -huh. a corn husker stop all over him like the football team. Oh I bet. Oh my gosh! Where did Marshall go? Most Americans don't realize that their household energy use produces twice as much pollution as the family car, or that America emits more than 25% of the world's greenhouse gases. But it's easier now than ever before to reduce energy waste at home and make the air a little cleaner. You might even save some money. Call this toll-free number for simple steps to make your home more energy efficient. It's easy when you know how. concrete world of flip phones and faxes and talk to 20 kids about how business works. They will question everything, but those 20 kids will talk to 20 more. So by Saturday, which is set on Thursday, could be halfway around their world. You get to make a difference. Could just make the rest of your week pretty dull. That's the new JA, teaching kids how business works. see our children succeed, but setting easy goals for our kids creates the toughest obstacle they'll ever face, because succeeding in the real world isn't easy. Help the effort to raise standards in America's public schools. Call 1-800-96-PROMISE. You're still on CU Sports Magazine. I'm Marshall Zellinger. We're back here. Now to Kimmy Godin, Kimberly Godin, who's sitting next to me. We're going to show you her senior piece. She's gone from golf caddy down in, where is it? Lake Green Gables. Green Gables. All the way to the big time here at CU Sports Magazine. And it is my job to make her cry <laughs> with Ben Korn's piece. Let's see no. Kimberly Godin. I'm going to make you cry. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> She's going to weep. <laughs> no, from a caddy not. to an anchor. How caddy does, to anchor. Well, you're going to see the progression from... Small caddy, five years old, six years old. Can you imagine Kimberly Godin <laughs> taking a bag around and she's this big? Well, she did. And she's an Evans Scholar now, and she's finishing her career up at CU here, and now I'm going to make her cry. <laughs> or laugh very hard. Laugh very hard. To see you when I wake up is a gift I didn't think could be. I'm going to miss the family that has been created over the past few years to see Sports Magazine. Marshall, Mush, John, um, Mitch, definitely Mitch, Abby, um, all these people, is, they've, we've really built each other up. That's I can't explain. Would I be That was very nice, thank you. I didn't cry, just laughed real Yet. hard. Just laughed real hard. 
The CU women's volleyball team Saturday ended their season on a high note. They won all three matches at the Air Force Academy tournament. The Buffs end the season 8-2-1. and one. Setter, setter Allison Barnes sat out because of a bone chip in her left wrist. Gosh, that's got to hurt. The Spikers defeated both Adams State and Mesa State 2-0. Megan Barkman and had nine kills against Mesa State, and Sarah Frederick had seven kills and five blocks against Adams State. Colorado lost its first game against the University of Denver, but came back to win the match. Monique Gerlach had 13 kills against Denver. Regular season volleyball begins for the Spikers on August 30th in Hon Honolulu, Hawaii. Honolulu, Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> Mitch Schneider couldn't join us today, which is very sad because he's also a senior leaving us. But before he leaves, he wanted to judge and rate how the CU Athletics did this year. And he did that with the best of awards, like Nick Bakai from ESPN. I bring you Mitch Schneider, where the numbers never lie. We start with Coach of the Year. This one was a tough call between football coach Gary Barnett and women's basketball coach Seal Berry. Both coaches had their programs in the national spotlight and both took their teams far in the postseason. In a close call, we give the nod to Coach Barnett. Gary led his troops to a Big 12 championship, a date in the Fiesta Bowl, and a crushing win over Nebraska. All this after a 3-8 season. From Coach of the Year, we go to Team of the Year. Now it's your turn, Seal. The women's basketball team won 24 games, beat Stanford to make it to the Elite Eight in the NCAA Tournament, and we're just so fun to watch. Congrats, ladies. You are News Team's Team of the Year. The Wait Till Next Year Award goes to the Colorado women's tennis team. They had a tough spring season because of some early injuries and an ugly 4-7 and seven record in conference play. But they should return six upperclassmen, including the top of their lineup. We're expecting good things from you ladies in the future. The Biggest Disappointment of the Year Award goes to... Surprise, surprise, the men's basketball team. They went 4-10 and ten on the road, lost to a terrible Iowa State squad, and did this all despite having a future NBA star on their team, David Harrison. No wonder Ricardo Patton has been looking to coach elsewhere in the foreseeable future. The Fan of the Year award will be split three ways between former news teamer Joel Priest and those wonderful twins. What CU women's basketball game would be complete without these three in the stands? and the final news team award and my personal favorite, the play of the year. We looked through hundreds of hours of game films to come up with this year's award. And who will ever forget Dan Graham's one-handed touchdown grab against the Kansas State Wildcats in Manhattan. This unbelievable catch helped the Buffs beat K-State for the first time in five seasons and was so pretty to look at, so pretty. There you have it Buffalo fans, the first annual news team sports awards. What a year it was. I swear I just saw Chip like five times doing the I same know. thing. I could he be was. wrong. He's really repetitive. A little bit. Yeah. All right, more seniors here. This one is going to be Mush. We call him Mush. His name's Ian Cohen. <laughs> I don't know where he is. <laughs> From Newton, Mass. He's a Boston fan in every way. The New England Patriots finally took him out of his misery this past winter, Indeed. but he still has the Red Sox Indeed. going for him. So we'll show you how Mush lives with himself being a Boston fan. John Lynn, where now sits down with some names you might recognize to discuss football. Another turn and boy. Mitch over here, I love the wittiness of him. If you guys ever watch a sports bag episode, the wittiness. He'll be sitting there, me and him, and I'll forget to intro him. This has never happened, but if it did, and I forget to intro him, you know, when he comes on the, on the, on the desk with me, he'll make something up. Like, hey, you know, that's pretty nice outside. That wittiness is thinking right there. Who will help you besides you giving the assistant coaches or captains on the team that. Thanks to John and Marshall. Coming up after the break, we've got in depth riot footage. Stay tuned. It's ours because we're hanging out making friends and the parties at Marshall's house. <laughs> God, dude, the Armoretto's and Cokes. During the football season, he's focused on making tackles and helping his team win. But what happens when football becomes too much for him? He goes fishing. How hard is it falling on a team that's losing? 
<laughs> it's difficult, but the guys are good guys, and they're keeping their spirits up, and so it's not as bad as you think. All right, great, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Chris, for joining us, and make sure to check out his column in the Border Daily Camera. Back to you in the studio. You know, it's usually one of two reasons why a team continues to lose and play poorly. Either just not good, or they're not trying. So which one is it? Delapine does get a basket and two points for the Buffaloes tonight, and that's great to see. It's great to see the French woman getting some points up on the board. A win for the Colorado Buffaloes would have assured them a top four finish in the Big 12 and a first round bye in the Big 12 tournament. Why Nebraska, when he grew up in this house just down the road from CU? Why Nebraska, when his high school football coach is the son of CU coach Bill McCartney? Why Nebraska, when he owns flesh and blood, his father played for CU? I hope you at that time of your life. <laughs> he is instantly. <laughs> I'm really sad that Ian is, is leaving us. And my other question is, why was his so long and mine wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, Mush. Mine was short, too. I know. <laughs> We can move oh, ahead. No. All right. <laughs> We're going to... <laughs> Mush has got to leave the room. This is out of control. Do you know which celebrity um, <laughs> was attacked? Okay, do you know which celebrity was attacked by coyotes? Amanda Wright has the answer. And we're sorry for all <laughs> the shenanigans. A 1,300-pound running back is every defensive line's worst nightmare. Lucky for the University of Colorado football team, this monster is on their team. And lucky for CU opponents, Ralphie number 4 only runs before each game rather than during the game. This majestic buffalo is one of the nation's most loved and admired mascots. She lives with Kevin Priola just outside of Denver. Ralphie came to the University of Colorado in 1998. She had been living on Ted Turner's ranch in Montana. She was just a month old when coyotes attacked her. Ranch hands literally found her in the jaws of a coyote. She had bite marks all around her neck. Even today, she still has the scars from that terrifying experience. A woman bottle fed her back to health. And to this day, Ralphie still prefers women. When my wife comes around, she perks up and is real happy. As Ralphie got better, she began acting more rambunctious, and the ranch hands started calling her Rowdy. The name stuck. She was, she was rowdy when she was young, and I think that's how they gave it to her. Each, each, each buffalo had its own real name. I know Rowdy, or Ralphie Three, we called her Tequila. That was her name. Apparently, the alcohol theme has been with Ralphie for quite a while. Ralphie Number Two's real name was Moonshine, but they called her Moon for short. As CU's mascot, Ralphie has many responsibilities. She appears at various promotions, like this one for the expansion of Folsom Field. Surprisingly, she doesn't mind traveling. And of course, her most important job is to run on the field on game day. Go to the stadium about an hour before kickoff and set up everything and make sure everything's in its place. To get everything in its place takes practice and training. But how do you train a buffalo? Um, just a lot of repetition, trying to reward her when she does the right thing. Give her oats or something or give her some food or let her rest. That's reward too. So if, if she doesn't do it right, she runs again. Ralph is here when she isn't working. This is one of her favorite pastimes. But she loves rolling in the dirt and uh, she doesn't like the shade for some odd reason. She she always likes to stay in the sun, even no matter how hot it is. If she paces and I'll get in there sometimes and chase her around just to work her out a bit and play with her. The exercise is good for her. With proper care, Kevin expects Ralphie to live another 10 years. Not a bad life for a buffalo that almost died in the mouth of a coyote. Very few schools have a live mascot, especially one this unusual. You know, she's a bison and not very many people see a bison up close every day. Amanda Wright, CU Sports Mag. <laughs> Ralphie's got the right idea, it works. It, it does. All right. Now to the rest of the seniors, we've seen individual ones, but for some reason, for, because of due to time constraints, yes. we had to fit the rest in one piece. So now we are going to have a little celebration and a little goodbye for Abby and John Landwehr and Zach Nelson and maybe Marcus, Randy. Randy Simon. There's, there's, there's a lot of seniors leaving, so. The senior montage. <laughs> yes, let's have a look. <coughs> All right. 
guess my words of wisdom to you guys who are going to be in sports mag is to stay active. You know, it may drag on over a semester or whatever, stick with it because uh, that's something that I should have done more of. But also remember, on a note about college, stay in as long as you can. I stayed in five and a half years and God, I'm glad I did it because I don't know what the hell I'm doing now. Because of CU's winning ways, we put together a little panel to talk about college football. Thinking of an interview with Randy Simon tonight. I think the line I like by Randy is he's got two words for you. Brutal. Who ah, that peculiar smell of sweat and vulcanized rubber can mean only one thing, that is hoop season. Mitch, how you doing, Zach? I'm doing good. Looking forward to this game, man. I'm pumped. It's gonna be a great game, and I really like that trivia question. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. All your help you've given over the years. Hey, and don't forget our very first package that took us way too long to edit. And now for a little piece we like to call trivia. I love it. And then also in terms of the course, I think that's the What sort of expectations did you have coming into the season and, and which ones were met and which ones weren't? Well, I'm going to miss the seniors because I'm going to have to be in front of the camera and behind the camera and I really didn't do that very much actually. I much prefer to just stay where I am and I wish they could stay but I know they can't so I'm going to miss them a lot. Goodbye is not yet. Don't worry about the goodbye yet. All right. It's sad. Trivia answer time. Again, we'll show you the question. You've had, I, I promised 27 minutes. I probably gave you 28, so you cheated. The question was, when was the last time CU had a player selected in the first round? And I know Mush knows the answer to this, but he's off stage, so he's not even going to say it. I know Kimmy knows the answer to this, but I'm not going to let her say it. We're going to take the best email by John Jones, and he had the answer right. He had both of them. And the answer is... 1997 first round was Chris Naoli and Ray Carruth, both in the first round. You can see when they were picked there and by what teams. And I guess a side note, you probably know Ray Carruth doesn't exactly play for the Panthers anymore. And that's all that needs to be said about him. Yes, folks, it's time to break out the tissues. And this time, it's not because we're saying goodbye. It's not because I'm leaving. It's not because Marshall's leaving. It's because it's time for this week's Athlete of the Week. Because Mush is um, yeah, it's because Mush is leaving too. Um, the accolades continue to pour over, <laughs> pour in the former buff tight end Daniel Graham as he earns this week's honors. The Patriots picked Graham in the first round of last week's NFL draft, making Graham the first buff to go in the first round since 1997. That's great, Dan. In addition, the CU standout earned first team All-American honors. Graham also won the Mackey Award going to the nation's top tight end. Congratulations, Dan Graham. He makes such awesome catches. I'm always impressed by He catch. not only makes a lot of catches, he makes a lot of bank now. <laughs> he makes a lot of bank now, too. Yes, this I, is very true. I wish I had one day in that guy's bank account could just swim around or something, Dan Graham. He make a lot of money. I got to be friends with that kid now. <laughs> oh, no. Also, want to tell you that Mandy Nightingale drafted in the WNBA, 37th overall by the Portland Fire, left for training camp in Chicago yesterday. All the luck to her. DJ Harrison also drafted to the minor leagues of the NBA, if you will, somewhere in Carolina. USBL is what Mush is telling me. So that equals about eight that I can think of that were drafted by teams, semi-pro, pro, whatever. Like we said, a lot of free agents going to be picked up, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we'll have some fun. Yeah. The Buffs will have some fun out there, like we will. Definitely, definitely. I'm going to have fun. You'll have to be my friend, too, because I will also be making bank as soon as I graduate, <laughs> just so you know. Usually, when it comes to the last show, I'm at the back, so I'm going to have to ask for some people to come up here since I can't do it there. So I want to see Mush come up here. I want to see Zach come up here. And they're giving me the no sign for some reason. <laughs> and we want to say goodbye. We're saying goodbye. This All is right. it for Sportsman. We're saying goodbye. We're done. This goodbye. is it. Thank you. Goodbye. Man.
Luke's in the back. I know he's yelling goodbye. Thanks, he's back directing. Thank you, Ben, for doing those pieces. And ben, thank you. I would like to give um, a big heartfelt good luck, break a leg, whatever you want to call it, to Kate, Corn, and Sean, because you will now be taking our place and stepping up. And uh, I hope and I wish the best for you with what you guys do with C Sports Magazine in the next couple of years. I know it can be great and hopefully you can make it just as good as we made it.